Hello, hello everyone. Brookle here. I just wanted to show off a few things about the Infernals today. Um, first thing I thought was interesting, um, the Shroud, the way Shroud works in Stormgate is pretty different from Creep in StarCraft 2 and Root War. Um, when you have, um, in, in StarCraft 2, when you have like a creep tumor on the low ground, it will actually spread creep up the ramp and onto the high ground. But in Stormgate, it doesn't do that. It's interesting, even if you put a sh um, if you put an effigy up here. Structure created. Uh, it will, you know, put the creep up here, but then the moment it's destroyed, it's gone again. In StarCraft 2, it would just stay. Uh, I want to highlight this again over here as well. Um, like, there is creep going up, I mean, shroud going up the ramp here, but um, it doesn't connect with this and, and make it go further. That's totally how it would work in StarCraft 2, I'm pretty sure. But, um, uh, it does go from high ground to low ground. Well, wait, does it always? Yes, it pretty much always. Like, uh, if it's like a cliff, it actually spreads downwards. Which in StarCraft 2, it would do only if you put an effigy down, or like a creep tumor down, and then if it was destroyed, it would then stay, because it's in range of this. But it wouldn't generate it to begin with. So the, the shroud behavior is a lot more consistent than the creep behavior ever was, I feel like. Which is interesting, I like it, I like it. And yeah, shroud just, um, it, it gives you all your units uh, an extra shield. Um, which slowly dissipates the longer you're off a shroud. Well, actually, this is immediately falsified by looking at these units. Why do they still have shield? Interesting. Anyway, um, we got the Gaunts and the Brutes. We know them. I, the, the, I might, I might as well just go over them. The Brutes, um, have upgrades to, um, like, they have a, the Sunder Solar ability, which allows them to just split into... Uh, fiends. They have an upgrade um, to give them a speed upgrade. Like the first few seconds, they get a speed upgrade. The fiends get a speed upgrade when they emerge out of the brute. Then the next upgrade is that they become three instead of two. And then the upgrade after that is that they have like a temporary um, attack speed boost, kind of like a crackling upgrade. These are like tier three upgrades at the end when they get this little crackling ability. Yeah, it has increased movement speed, increased attack speed. And they, they move a good amount faster. It's 25% apparently. And yep, that's the Brutes. Um, pretty useful unit. Good mineral, good Luminite sink. Can't complain too much. I mean, Exos wreck him, but you know, who counts? Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, the um, the Gaunts, they have... Um, their first, their first um, ability here is uh, on by standard. It just makes it so that um, attacks bounce twice to nearby enemies, dealing 30%, 33% of primary damage. So it's like a mutalisk attack. So it attacks and it bounces around. It's not going to bounce around on other allies. That's just not how it works. But it's useful. The next upgrade just makes it so that the um, uh, it, it causes infest on enemies. And the infest um, causes a DOT effect on the enemy, and when the enemy dies with infest, it then spawns a fiend, which is also very useful. And then after that, it, um, there's a movement speed upgrade, which is quite substantial. It becomes a lot more microable with the movement speed upgrade. And then the imps, they also have an upgrade, uh, which is the flame on. You actually have to activate it, and then it needs to channel. And then it's active, and then you, it only detonates after the time runs out. So it's not as easy to micro as like the Bane Links in StarCraft 2. And you have to push it three times, for like once for every for every imp, basically. So if you have four imp, you have to actually hit V four times, which is interesting. And they don't move while they're channeling, so that's kind of what you're looking at every time when you oh the goat oh no. That's kind of what you're looking at every time when the pros do it. It looks kind of weird when they micro it. I always thought so, at least. 
And yep, that's these guys. Uh, another one I want to show off is the Magmadon. Uh, trample, it's pretty much a good idea to always put Trample on outer cast um, because they, when they're in the range of enemies, they should just always be casting this. And yeah, it's very useful for, um, they have an upgrade that makes it um, allow Trample to periodically stun nearby enemies or uh, ground units. This is really useful against uh, Vanguard Exos because otherwise they just stutter step away from all your army, which is really painful when they do it. It's really hard to... The the Magmon is one of the few counters you really have against the Exos, I feel like. Um, you all, yeah, well, I will get over, over the other units in a minute. But yeah, the uh, consumability, I'll go over that real quick. So if you have all your Magmodons, now they all have Shroud, obviously. Come on. So now he's without Shroud, so he has the consume ability, sacrifice nearby Felhawk or Fiend, recover 100% of white uh, health instantly. So we bring a Fiend here, uh, Felhawk would also work. Or we just go, um num 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 num. Come on. Oops, he pushed the wrong button. Um num 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 num. Yep, it's back again. Up, and yep, that's the magma done. Next we got the, um... The Weaver. Good old Weaver. The Weaver's interesting. Um, something I didn't realize for the longest time. They're uh, slow as heck, but they have um, Shroud Walk, which just doubles their movement speed when they're on Shroud. So the moment he's on Shroud, he goes much faster. So you can pretty much make like a highway for them. This really incentivizes you to actually spread the Shroud for them, so you can actually get them around. And... Um, they have the consumability, and um, just like the Magmadons. And the Lash has an interesting side effect. The Lash has a pretty short range, I feel like. Um, so I don't use it on enemies that much. But uh, if you have an ally, and let's say that um, he's out of Shroud, you can actually Lash him. And he gets his he gets his uh, shroud back, which is pretty cool. This is mostly useful for Magmodons, I feel like. When the Magmodons are in the front line, sucking up all the damage from the Exos, let's say, so you can just go grab the um, grab the Magmodon and pull him back again, and give him full shroud, and then he just goes back in and tramples some more Exos. Um, yeah, they they have the consumability as well, and they have shroud wave, which uh, allows them to teleport back to to the main base or a shroud stone or a wraith stone. So um, come in. They do that. Oh, you actually have to do it once. Oh no, they both do it. Sweet. Oh, and one more thing, which is hilarious about weavers. Uh, they have serrated soul knuckles, which what the hell? Two, zero damage? What does that mean? Um, there's it. Uh, Soul, Re Soul Ripper. This unit's weapons uh, deals 10% of the target unit's max health. 5% uh, to structures. So that makes Weavers terrible against anything, any, uh, any tier 1 units pretty much. But they're great against, um, you know, the big boys. They're good against Atlases, they're good against Vulcans. They can even pull an Atlas and a Vulcan towards himself and then deal the 10% damage on them. So that's pretty much their role in a fight. And they are slow as heck, but uh, if they are about to die, they can teleport back. And also, you know, when you have a situation where... Come on. He's not doing it. When you have a situation where... Yep, there we go. When you have a situation where, um, I don't know, like a bunch of um, Exos come up and want to take down your Weavers, then your Weavers <laughs> just give each other health back. They're like, oh no, run for your life! And they're both full health again. And they can do this uh, every few seconds, pretty much. <laughs> so, um... You know that 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 would be that would be lash micro. I'm sure this will be a thing, if it's not already a thing. Um, 
What did I forget? Oh yeah, the high side. That's that's kind of like the Colossi in StarCraft. Like uh, a Colossi in StarCraft 2, when it's next to a cliff, it can see on the high ground. That's pretty much what this means. It has the, a vision as if it was an air unit. And also it's a detector. It, it kind of means that at the same time. Yeah. Detect stealth units and see onto high ground as if it were a flyer. Pretty cool concept for a unit. I like it. Um, what are we going to do next? Uh, we might as well do the... The Hexen, because they're just here right now. The Hexens are a little funny. They also have the Shroud Weave, so they can also teleport. Bye-bye. But they also have uh, an upgradable ability, the Venom Trap. And when you trigger this, then you can... Um... Oh, okay, I've got these Falhawks here right now, which is hilarious. So the uh, Hexen Trap, it, in it infests the enemy. And which, you know, does the DOT effect, and when they die, it spawns a fiend. And it also reveals them, so even when I'm not here anymore, I still see them, which is fun. So it's, it's, um... It, it's an ability that needs some planning. Our forces are in battle! <laughs> Hilarious. Not really what I planned here. Our forces are in battle! Excuse my newbiness. Where are the hex in it? There you are. Capture point secured. But yeah, the the heck the the third ability that you also pretty much need to only get a tier three is miasma. It's like a channeling ability, and it uh, costs mana as you're casting it. Like it costs the initial forty mana at the beginning. So it goes down to 60. And then it continuously uses up energy while you're still casting it. And this is kind of like a, you know, kind of like a storm. Or like a, it's not really a fungal growth. It just continuously applies um, uh, infest on any, any enemies that are in here. At the moment they stop casting it, it just instantly disappears as you can see. I can totally see this being used on like worker lines to harass workers. Um, yep. And yeah, I think that's- oh yeah, of course, the the School of Shedda. Everybody knows this, I think. Attacks both air and ground, and the moment it attacks, it uh, reveals the unit, pretty much. Very useful. Um, also for scouting. What are we gonna check out next? We got the Hellborn. The Hellborn, uh, is, um... Like, if you're addicted to, um, casting, f uh, to, to select all army, then the Hellborn is really a liability. It doesn't have a siege mode like the Atlas does. Like, if you, if you siege an Atlas, then, you know, it can't, it can't do anything wrong. But the, uh, the Hellborn, if you select all army, it, it will always get itself into trouble. Uh, it, it has an upgrade at, like, tier 3, which is, uh, the Molten Touch. Light, um, light targets on fire, dealing 8 damage per second on, uh, for 3 seconds. So it's like an extra DOT. It deals more damage. And it's splash. So if you can get a DOT off on, like, uh, a group of XOs, and then you do a, even more dam uh, damage with Infest, so you can have two DOTs at the same time, which is kind of crazy. Um, but of course you have to be able to not... Uh, Sectal army these guys actually keep them somewhere where they uh, Can like attack from a high ground or a from behind a forest or something And uh, this unit's attack shatter on impact dealing 12% with its primary damage. Oh, yeah, that's just its splash damage effect It's a uh, kind of funny. It also um, it's very useful to clear out um, Forest and stuff so you kind of see that here it hits the first tree and the rest of the trees are just splash damage I, that's something I didn't show off with the Magmadon. Magmadon can also do this. Very useful. The pathfinding's a little iffy because, um, you know, as long as there's trees and you click behind the trees and the Magmadon just wants to, you know, go around the trees, so you can't just you have to go in front of the Magmadon to make it go forward like that. Something to keep in mind. So yeah, that's the Hellborn. Um, very strong unit if you can micro it well. It's, I don't know, I, 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 I can't do with the Hellborn. <laughs> They're so hard to micro. Um, what else we got? The Spriggans are really, um, what are they called? The, the Shadow Flyers are, they have a tier 3 upgrade, which, or is it, yeah, I think it's tier 3. Um, 
The regular attack is just to set on an air unit, and um, the moment they... So it does 50 damage um, on the main target, and then uh, half of that, so 25 on a small area around that. So that's really good for like celestial prisms. You can totally shoot down prisms with this. If the... Um... But it also does like a, a, an armor reduction effect. So the first um, Shadow Flyer that attacks, let's say, a um, celestial town hall structure, you know, the Flying Fortress, uh, I forgot their name, uh, it will do 50 damage on it. But then the second one will actually deal 75 damage on it, which is interesting. So if you have like a group of um, the, uh, at the, the basic town hall structures for celestials has like 800 life. So uh, the first one dealing 50 and then all the others dealing 75. Um, like, is it 10? Is it more than 10? I, it's somewhere around there. You need like 10 um, or, or, or 12 Shadow Fires to take down a level one um, Celestial Town Hall structure, which is pretty cool. But then there's also the Dive Bomb ability, which you upgrade at, uh, at tier three. And uh, actually, I don't know if I can cast it on my own structures. Nope, I cannot. I do want to show it off though, so let's just go to our friendly neighborhood um, NPC here and just do this. Wee Dive Bomb! That's a good amount of damage. That was like 125, I think. Oh, 150 even. Okay. And there's very little people can do about it, so I, I can understand why this is tier 3. Is this especially good against, like, you know, defense structures? Like, you can just go to a supply depot and just wreck it. Ooh. Only took 3, actually. Interesting. Yep, that's the, that's the, that's the Shadow Flyer. And, uh, next we might as well do the Spriggan. Um, the Spriggan, uh, it's a little funny. So it does three attacks at once. So this unit fires three missiles with each attack. So armor is really good against them. So anything with armor, like they're not that great at attacking buildings, honestly, and they take uh, quite a while to kill unit, uh, kill worker lines. But uh, they have um, they have binding saliva, which um, so it, it it binding saliva works on both uh, enemy units and on. Uh, buildings. So enemy units, they get their attack speed and their movement speed reduced, while uh, structures, they get their production speed reduced. So that is interesting. And then we got sal sal salivary <laughs> overflow increases the maximum potency of binding saliva from 30% uh, percent reduction to 60. So I'm going to take two of them and check this real quick. So you can do that, and you see it here, reduces this, um, reduces attack, movement, and production speed. So this thing would, um, this command post would um, build workers slower, essentially. You can also see the effect on these um, dogs here. They're all slowed, in theory. They don't really look that much slower. Interesting. What else we got? I think we're reaching the end here. Yeah, we got fiends here. We got the flay dragon here. Oh yeah, I wanted to show this guy off. So kind of something I thought at the beginning would be uh, the harbinger is basically the dropship for the um, uh, for the infernals. Uh, you can put units into it pretty easily just by flying. You can. Um, Hold shift and Z, uh, Z and then left click all these units, which I think is really nice. I like that. Uh, alternatively, but the only way to get them out is now to hit um, C so they go to the ground and it instantly pops out all the units, which is really cool. Once they're on the ground, they can just go back in and then it can also unload all, but then it takes a while to do it, which is kind of funny. It also drops Shroud uh, everywhere, as you can see. And uh, it also has a, has a Shroud Weave ability, so we, we go back up. We just teleport. Whoa! 
basically recall. We can recall uh, not just to, to town hall structures, but also to the shroud stone, which is great. Yeah, big fan of this of the Harbinger's design. It's very interesting. Com um, and yep, last but not least, we got the Flay Dragon. Uh, Flay Dragon costs 700, 700 to build, and uh, you need the Elder Shrine on level three. So essentially, you have the Shrine level one, then you build either a Vault or a Conclave. Then you can do uh, Shrine level two. Then you can build the Twilight Spire, and then the uh, Shadow Cleft, and then you can build the uh, tier three shrine, and then you can spend 700, 700, and 150 uh, top bar energy uh, to get a dragon. And you can build as many dragons as you want, actually. Oh, it has a cooldown, actually. Wait, can each one of them? Oh yeah, you do need a level. So if you if you had like uh, a whole row of um, Elder Shrines, I, I think you could mass produce them. But it would be a little ridiculous. I think most games you would really only have one of them. Um, and I mean, they're they're pretty great units. Uh, they have. Um... Oh, they stopped moving. Let's find something real quick. Um, over here. Far away from any shroud stones. <laughs> so they have an auto attack. When they auto attack, they, um, they cast and fest. That's just something I want. He's actually losing against these guys. But essentially, uh, he has his, uh, the fatigue breath, which just, um, puts, uh, and fast on all the units below and then he has inhale poison so he can remove all the po uh, all the infest from all the enemies again dealing damage in the process and uh, giving himself white health for all the infest he got so if I cast it and then push X it does a lot of damage and he gets white health back so that's really cool might as well go over the top bar abilities as well. We've got the summoning effigy. Our when he casts it... Are in battle. Yes, chill. Point secure. Yes, chill, chill, chill. If you cast it on a Shroud, it stays here forever until somebody destroys it. If you cast it off of Shroud, then it will uh, have a timer on it. So you can see here it has a timer on it. If I had cast it on the Shroud Stone, it would stay forever. That would be destructible. Uh, the Nightfall Infestation is also very useful, you can cast it, all enemies in it become infested, they get the DOT, and when they die, they spawn fiends, which is great. The Hellspawn Resurgence, also very useful, like you get uh, three brutes out of this factory here, vault, sorry. You can cast, uh, I mean, it's actually much more efficient if you do Control e and then push here. Then you can just spam another three. It's a great use of energy. Uh, we got the Shroud Manifesta Shrouds of Manifestation, when somebody's just harassing you. It can only be built around uh, Town Hall Structure, so you cannot build it here. Or here. Or here. Or here. Another location structure created. It's a, it needs to, so it's not because it's on Shroud. Actually, it might have a similar range as the Shrine Spread Shroud. Maybe that is actually related. Maybe that is on purpose. But yeah, and then we have this ability, the Shadow Fall. It covers the entire map in Shroud for 30 seconds, which is great for anything that has needs the movement speed. So, actually, this is an interesting effect below them. It looks weird. Yeah, and the, as the fog of war is revealed, they <laughs> uh, they reveal more and more Shroud, basically. Oh God. So yeah, pretty much any um, building the Weavers attack, they they attack, they kill it in 20 hits. It's always 20 hits because they do 5% damage to buildings. Um, yep. And I think that's pretty much all the infernal units. Um, pretty cool ideas. Definitely some nitpicks, especially about the infernal not having a siege mode. <laughs> I think I need a siege mode for my infernals. But other than that, it's great. Um, anyway, uh, thanks for watching. I hope the, 
the infernals they they get more toys i feel like um i feel like the celestials have the most toys at the moment they have the most interesting units but um i like what i see with the infernals so far and i i, I hope you know I, I can't wait to see what happens in this game how they change it um thanks for watching everyone have an awesome day evening morning and night and i'll see you all next time cheers